Hello and welcome to Console Shock, retro and modern gaming chat with me, Trev, and as always, Stu. How's it going, Stu? Hey, Trev, how you doing? Good. 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 That was quite an energetic uh, beginning there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, things are good, things are good, the weather's weather's turned nice. right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, Northern Ireland FC are in the Europa League final tonight. Um, oh, we mean Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. Other, otherwise known as They're basically yeah, the Rangers. same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically. The biggest uh, team from Northern Ireland, I think. Aren't I think they? The biggest, like yeah. Celtic are the biggest team from Republic of Ireland, I think. Well, I think, do you know, I, I think in, 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 in Southern Ireland, no one really is, is bothered. But in Northern Ireland, it's, it's either Celtic or, or Rangers, you know, depending yeah. on sort of which side of, of, of the community uh, you're on. But What about Linfield and Glen and Glen Torren? Well, because yeah, I went to see uh, Glen Avon versus oh, right. Linfield at yeah. uh, Windsor Park a good wow. few years ago, and that was um, it was it was quite interesting. So going into Windsor Park, you have to walk through this tunnel of of, of sort of me- metal tunnel covered in um, like some kind of like, 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 like what was it campus, called barbed wire? Yeah. So, and Sounds you know, to stop people sort of throwing stuff at you, but I think that's more for the sort of the Northern Ireland games. So, um, <laughs> turn up in a Republic of Ireland shirt, but hey, what's up, guys? Hey, it's hey, hey guys, we're all, we're all the same, right? Hey, it's I've got Ireland. the shirt, and, and yeah. yeah, that'd be, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be good, yeah, yeah, that, 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 there'll be, um, difficulties, uh, for that person, I it imagine. Would, it would. But, it's a nice ground, Windsor Park, actually, and they've done the rebuild well, haven't they, in the last yeah, few years? Well, I mean, I went um, when there was a, stay, a stand on one side, and then there was a stand on another side, and then the two other sides were like building sites, so yeah. they were building it all all then. But I'll be honest with you, it's it's I don't, don't want to sound degrade uh, Northern Irish, or the Irish Premier League or whatever it's called, um, but it's you know it, it's like National League level sort of attendances and football and well um, yeah it's no different in the south really they're like league league two re- really sort of size teams yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, 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 exactly but you know there must have been a couple of thousand people there but um in in, in a stadium which holds sort of sort of 25 26 thousand or whatever it is so it does sort of take away a little bit from from the atmosphere but you should, um, you should read a book um this is this is going to be a great intro for everybody listening yeah. who wants to hear about video games but there's a book um um called that i think it's called oh, i actually read it year, donkeys years ago called there, there's always one and it's mm. about this english dude who supports um northern ireland He's got no yeah. like family connections to the country at all. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I can't remember what his, what his story was, why he started supporting them. But he mm. literally, like over the course of 10 years, he, he chronicled um, going to every Northern Ireland game home and away from like 1995 to 2005. And like sometimes he was literally the only fan. So they would let him yeah. go on the team, team bus. Uh, really? uh, to, to, to the games and all that stuff. It's really funny, really, really cool, like oh, very heartwarming I, I, book. I, I, I'm, I'm going to. As soon as we end, um, yeah, this podcast, I, I'm going to go and um, get yeah, that off Amazon. You can still get it, yeah. It's like uh, there's there's always one. It's called, uh, and it's uh, it's oh. really cool. Like you watched every game in that ten year spell, ninety five two thousand and five. So yeah, um, well, I mean, it's, it it's, cool. they seem to have like um, my my uncle and my cousin went to France for I want to say the Euros, Euro twenty sixteen, yeah, twenty sixteen, yeah. when when Northern Ireland got in. And it was it was it looked like an amazing sort of part party atmosphere and yeah um, they were I think they went to the three group games and you know they were they you know they were all on the front of the newspapers and stuff and getting in on the uh, sectarian chanting and all that hot yeah stuff. yeah do, do, <laughs> do, do, doing a bit of that but yeah, I mean, it's all I'll be honest I went where to, I I watched the games for for that one I went to um, an Irish pub in London, and they were like, you know, the home of the London Northern Irish Football Fan Club or something. Oh, right. And I, to be honest with you, they, 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 actually, it was all very, very good humoured, and there wasn't really anything um, that I, I would have classed. Oh, actually, that that that's all. I feel a little bit uncomfortable 
Uh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating and kind of taking the mick a bit. But oh no, no, I'm, 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 is, uh, I'm, yeah. Someone whose family is from a uh, big chunk of my family's from the Republic of Ireland. Mm. My mum's, are, my mum's um, Irish. I actually, you know, I, I'm not religious. So I've, I've got that baggage. Mm. I don't support Rangers or Celtic, you know, mm. particularly, you know. Um, well, so if like um, if if Northern Ireland are in a tournament, I'll I'll be quite happy to support them, and you know, hope mm. they do well. Um, that tournament, Ireland and and Northern Ireland are in the same uh, the same tournament. I was I was I was watching both uh, the you know both yeah. teams and hoping that they do well. So. Yeah, to me, I'm the, you know I'm quite happy for both of them to do well. I know there's some people that absolutely love one, hate the other. It's probably yeah. plenty of Irish people from both sides that probably do are quite happy to support both. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and you know I don't want to tell people how how their attitude should be, but well, no, I, no. I, I, oh, and this it's not related to video games, but in in recent Northern Ireland elections, you know the party that got sort of the biggest rise in in the ro- in in votes was, was the Alliance Party. And yeah, they're, yeah. they're not on 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 the the, the party the um you know the, the religious lines which traditionally they they always have been. And, I think and, it's and, a bit distasteful now, isn't it, when people allude to all that stuff? You know, yeah, it, it, where it, the exactly. troubles kind of originate. It, yeah, it, it, ex- exactly. I think you've got to move on with the times, and um, you, you you know the fact that you know one's a slightly different religion to the other and um what a great know, way to start like the that. podcast though yeah about <laughs> video games well you know what northern ireland are in loads of video games they're in they uh, are yes FIFA, yes uh pro evolution soccer uh, i used to i used to really enjoy playing as northern ireland in um iss 64 because yeah. they're one of the weaker sort of teams so mm. i used to really enjoy playing as them to try and win like the world cup and all that because it just gave you that extra bit of challenge Mm. Um, so yeah, I used to always try and play as them in um because Republic of Ireland always had were always a bit better in stats, so it wasn't as uh as fun as to sort of do that. And um I yeah, did, I, it... now this isn't a joke, but I did um I bought FIFA 18 on, on the Switch and I did a whole a couple of seasons uh, as as Charlton for, for oh, the same for the same for? reason. I don't even do that. And uh, and it and it was it was sort of quite the career um, mode. Yeah, the career mode, or played a season, or something. And, was it as um, like the whole? The, um, was it? Did you play as the whole team? Did you do the? the you have your own little dude that you? No, you no, play I play, you played as the whole team. So it's like, right, like yeah, a yeah. match. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I got a bit disappointed at the end of the season. It was oh, and now I didn't get promoted, even yeah, though I won the, the season. Of a fan, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just. Um, but anyway, talking about football games, what do you think about FIFA losing the name or giving up the name? FIFA um, <laughs> and change into yeah. EA Sports FC or something like that. I can't remember what it it's, is. I mean, but... um, yeah, I thought I, 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 I agree with them. I don't think the FIFA name really means that much. I mean, it originated from the fact that it was American or well, Canadians developing this game. Mm. Um, and uh, they were like, oh, who's what the NFL? American football's got the NFL, um, um, basketball's got the NBA. So, what has football got? There's got to be like an overarching company or, or organization. Yeah. They thought, oh, it's FIFA, isn't it? It's FIFA. Not really understanding that that's for international football, really. And there's there's leagues throughout mm. the world that have their own governing bodies. I mean, FIFA is the over like the top of the, the food chain with all of that. But yeah, um, everyone everyone knew who FIFA was, so it probably did make sense to have them as the name. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that's why they had it originally. But yeah, now it doesn't really. You know, I mean, people don't buy it to play as the international teams, do they? They're kind of a side no. show. Um, no. it's, sometimes it's, sometimes yeah. I'll do Brazil v Millwall, you know, for a laugh, <laughs> playing yeah. as Brazil. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's like, um, yeah, it's really about whatever league the people care about. And, you know, obviously in this country, people go nuts playing Premier League teams and Football League. Mm-hmm. Other countries, it'll be their own league. To be honest, yeah. them, it, it might serve them better just to be called after the league of the country. I know that's a big logistical uh, uh, thing mm-hmm. that to deal with. But, yeah, I mean, EA Sports FC sounds a bit stupid. I know it's from Ultimate Team. Uh, I think it sounds stupid. Uh, I don't really... I couldn't, like, if it was me, like I said, I would probably tell them you should just use the name of the... EA Premier League Soccer or something, EA La Liga, mm. uh, just something that'll be instantly like, oh, that's mm. clearly for, for for my league. Not I me. Mean, Esports FC. That sounds like some weird managerial, like mm. cartoony game. But yeah, yeah that's I, what I think. I mean, I mean, I I don't think it sounds quite um, quite right, but I think we'll get used to it. And 
Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I remember when FIFA started all those years ago, and I was disappointed it wasn't called Concacaf. Um, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what an area that is! Yeah, <laughs> all those fantastic teams in that re- region. That, that that's what I, I I thought it should have been called. Yeah, and just Concacaf. have those teams. Just have USA, Mexico, yeah, USA, Canada. Mexico, and Jamaica. Might have been is a difficult it? ask in 1993 when those teams were fairly well, apart from Mexico, were quite good, weren't they? Even in those days, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I, 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 I think, I think we'll just get used to it. It'll be GM Vauxhall Conference Soccer. GM uh, Beza Homes. Beza yeah, Homes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the Be- Beza Homes FC. Some great references that will really resonate with our core. Uh, yeah. Listen to the base there, yeah. <laughs> what was that one you you were saying? The um, oh, God, scaffold, skiffle, skiffle. Yeah, the south southeast counties combined counties league. combined counties. But it's, it's called skiffle. It's it's the league below yeah. where um, my other team that I watch, Welling United, are under the yeah. under some of the national league. What used to be called the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. Um, I think it's um. Yeah, it's not worth the money that they pay for it, I think, really. Um, mm. I don't think Konami will jump in there and snap it up. It's kind of worthless, I think, that name, really. You can obviously pick it up for your World Cup when you have a World Cup game. I don't know what that means for the World Cup game. Um, although there hasn't really been one, has there, since 2014? No, it, I mean, um, it seems like it used to be a big thing. It's, oh, here's the FIFA, especially for the World Cup. And yeah. now it's just like a downloadable thing. It's, yeah, yeah. And, and like, sort of giving away sort of free. So I thought it was... I always quite liked the World Cup games. It was always yeah. they always had a big cinematic, and it would had all the imagery from the World Cup. And yeah, yeah, all the, um, the teams full of properly licensed, and you get to qualify, you know, and go through a campaign. You could try and play a San Marino and qualify, and exactly, yeah, yeah. You, had, you had all of that, which was all sort of quite good fun actually. But I, th- I think it just doesn't fit in now with what what you know EA Sports wants to do with the Ultimate Team and the loot boxes and the Get in, no. I don't know, all, all of that and online. Well, and... I'm a big fan of international football. I really love international football. Some people don't care about it. Mm. Some people actively hate it. Um, and a lot of people just like, oh, when England are in a tournament, then I'll watch like I'll watch the games then. And that's mm. that. I kind of tune out um, after that and go and support my local I, team. I do. But, yeah, yeah I, I do get a little bit dis... Uh, I, you know, when you get into the football league, you, you know, the, the, the Premiership and, and, and or, or, you know, whatever league... And then your teams are playing, and then one week, that it all stops, and England has to go and play Andorra. Yeah, but then I don't mind that because it's I like international f- football, so it's a cool yeah. little break. Plus, I support Charlton, so it's a break from like the, the sort of the crap that, that whatever they're doing at that point in time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I don't really mm. mind that. I don't necessarily always focus on um, the England game. I, I look out for other really cool mm. international fixtures like. You know, um, you know, you'll get like um, in Concacaf, for example, when they're in World Cup qualifying, like USA v Mexico. That's like an mm. awesome game uh, mm. to watch. Uh, Brazil v Argentina might might be come, coming around. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah. just about the England game for me. Mm. Um, you know, Northern Ireland, Ireland's. You know, um, have they yeah. got a big game? Um, so there's a lot of stuff that I can sort of look out for. But yeah, I understand for most pe- people, I, that uh, they don't care. You know, mm. when England are in a tournament. What, what's your um? Well, I, I watched this video of, of this guy called Away Days on uh, YouTube, and he does. Oh, they can't know, yeah. Yeah, sort of a young lad. He's very engaging, and he does videos about retro football shirts, which I know you and myself uh, both like, both like Trev. Yeah. And, but then he goes to sort of away, you know, derbies and you know things like that. And I, I've watched a few of them. I said I haven't subscribed, but I always keep an eye out for them. They always pop up on my feed, and he, and he went to see the. Um, I don't know, a team in Florida play. And he, um, it, it, it was quite funny because it was very, um, it, it was very look, look like orchestrated fun. And they all had a good time there. And, you know, the football quality looked good, but it was just such a sort of an odd experience. And have you ever been to a, um, a, a soccer match in, in, in the USA? No, I've never, I've never actually been to the USA period. Um, oh, it's you not? I thought you went to New York, didn't you? No, um, I, oh. I, I, I want to. 
Um, yeah. but I've never been. Uh, my girlfriend has, um, yeah. but, but I haven't been. Um, I want to at some point. Obviously, the, the restrictions at the moment, I think, still mean no one. I think no one can at the moment go over there from here. Am I, or is that changed now? Oh, probably, um, yeah. But yeah, I don't have much interest in the MLS, though. I mean, I like mm. um, my favorite sort of American sport is NFL. Mm. Um, and I do actively watch games and like follow it through the season and, and everything. Um, so if I, if I was going to go over there, I'd be to watch that. You know, I probably yeah. wouldn't. But like, yeah, you know what? If I was in New York and I couldn't get a ticket to like the Giants or, or mm. the Jets, um, the two NFL teams, for people that don't know, um, I probably would go and try and maybe watch like, you know, an MLS game or, but mm. to be honest, it probably would be more likely I'd try and watch a basketball game or ice hockey, a sport mm. that I wouldn't really be able to see to that high mm. level. You know, I watch football all the time. So, soccer. yeah. So, so yeah. you might actually go there. And because I, I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd like to go and see a, a match of the, of the MLS and it all looked, it, it looked good fun, but. You, you know, it was almost a little bit cringeworthy. You know, they're all had all the, the, these silly charms. It was like they're trying to let, recreate the let's European. Let's go, let's go, let's yeah. go, and and it's like, oh, fucking shut, shut up, and you know, <laughs> sing something proper, and and it was maybe a little bit sort of orchestrated, and um, but I'm certainly, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've I've seen the 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 NHL. I've seen. Uh, the Canucks. I've um, you have seen New York Rangers. Yeah, and um, that, that that was yeah. I'm not 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 seen the Islanders, and I saw the LA Clippers. All oh, right, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That that was good. Basketball. Yeah, I've not seen. I've only seen NFL in in London, and I saw the um, in the baseball. I saw the Blue Jays. Yeah, I do like right. to catch these things when they come over. I mean, I, I've, mm. I've been to a lot of the NFL games in London. I've been mm. for a few years, but I want to go this year if I can get a ticket, which I probably can't, uh, but I'll yeah. try. Um, and because the Giants are, um, are, in, are in one of the games, so I kind of like the New York teams generally mm. in sort of American sports. Um, and, yeah, I've seen basketball in London. I saw one of the London games a few years ago. Um, the Raptors v. Someone, can't remember who, but that was cool. Um, the baseball, I know it's coming back next year. Um, yeah. So I quite like I quite like baseball, so I'd like to go and see that. Um, but yeah, no, it's um. It's, well, give me a shout about the baseball anyway. That'd be good. I will. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be up for that. Yeah. Anyway, people want to know about what I've been playing this week. No, they don't. They do. They're sick of that's, that's what, what they're holding playing. on for. Yeah, but I've been playing FIFA. <laughs> I, 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 I've looked at the analytics, and there's a big spike when I talk about what I've been playing. That specific point. In the uh, the podcast, yeah. And anyway, I've been playing. So what are you playing? War. Gears Tell of War. Us. The first as one, always. The first one, remastered. Oh, cool. Gone back to it, and it's it's really good. Really enjoying it. Really That's the only game. one I've played, uh, and I actually only I played the original, but the PC version of the original. So it was a hmm. slight. So I was able to play it at sort of sixty frames and like ten eighty p, but it yeah. wasn't the um, it was the original PC port of that game it wasn't like I, I tried to get the remastered one going on my pc and mm. it just ran like utter crap oh, so really? i was like uh yeah so like i've got the disc of the original so i dug it out i had to do a bit of fiddling to get it running it's kind of a windows vista kind of era oh, sort yeah. of game uh, but you can get it running and it looks really good um mm. it also runs better than it does in the 360 you can get 60 frames a second um mm. it's got it connects to xbox live so you'll get all the achievements don't know if it still does now. That was a few years ago, and I completed it. But um, yeah, I I I I like um, cover-based third-person adventure. Oh, it's more of a shooter as opposed to the adventure aspect. But mm. yeah, well, how how did you find the? Re was it on the Xbox Series you played it? Yes, yeah, so I'm playing on the on, on the Series X. Yeah, I, I mean it, it it it's good. I mean it's um I'm just enjoying. Is the no, campaign sort of being... identical? Is it literally the exact same missions? Or oh like yeah, 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 yeah. It's exactly the same. I don't. <clears throat> I mean, I played it when it originally came out in what's two thousand and seven. Yeah, yeah. But it was a good few years ago, and there are certainly things that I remember. Yes. From it, so I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I remember you have to go do this and that, and you had the light, and then the the, the berserker, and you had oh, to dodge the other oh, way. I hated and... that. I hated that bit the first time around. Yeah. Yeah, that was um... the hammer of dawn. Is it the hammer of dawn? The big light, sunlight yes. thing, yeah, beam yeah, that, thing. Yeah. That 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 was that was it, and. Um... Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I believe it's just the same, and just you know, the graphics have all just been you know turned up to ten and new textures and 4K uh, 60 FPS on this series, yeah. probably. Yeah, 
hopefully, hope oh, I'll, I'll never know if it is or not. But I, I think they're all on tell. Game Pass, aren't they? Like two, three, and Judgment. Mm. I think. Yeah, they're all Microsoft games, so they'll all be on there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I, I completed the first one and I enjoyed it, but I, I didn't mm. really get a big craving immediately after that. No. To um to go and play the second one, it's on my list to to do it to do two and three. Mm. I mean, they're good. They're games you can just like over a weekend. You could spend you spend ten hours and you could just power through the. If you're not looking yeah. to get all the achievements and 100 percent it, you just want to get through the campaign. You can do them in a nice, you know, sort of 10, 12 hour session. So I might try and do it. But like, but um, some games just grab me, some don't. I mean, it kind of half grabbed me, like 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 Dead Space. Like we talked about it loads recently, that completely grabbed me. And I actually mm. wanted to play the second one straight after the first, and I'm nearly finished mm. the third one now. I need to get back on that actually. But um, yeah, Gears of War kind of. Not so much, but um, yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, mm. Probably would. I think you know PCs and um, you know a decent gaming PC would probably be able to run the Ultimate Edition fairly well. But to be honest, you've got yeah. an Xbox One X um, at least. Oh, yeah, know, that'll play it. Probably run absolutely. fine anyway. It, yeah, it, it, exactly. And this, I think it's like two pounds in in CX if you actually want the disc version. Oh yeah. So yeah, it costs absolutely nothing. And you know, for you know, what I think is is, is a very good game. So. Uh, but what have you been playing this week, other than FIFA or EA Sports <laughs> FC? Um, I actually last night I I um, I played my mainly old stuff lately. Um, I dug out my Super Famicom um, mm. and actually p- popped it back in my telly. Um, I sort of said previously that um, I don't have my big setup anymore, where everything is plugged in and ready to go. I just mm. have my one sort of retro console that I'm focused on that particular time. I started off the week on the Saturn. Oh yeah, so I've got the uh, Sati Ata, so I've got access to basically oh, the entire man, library. I, I want that. Is that the yeah, one the you plug great... in the back? Yeah, yeah, it goes in the video CD sort of expansion, oh. uh, and it's great. Um, but the the problem with that though, Trev, I've got a video CD card, so I won't be able to watch movies. Well, you you don't have to get that. You could just get um, a Fenrir, or you know, get an optical <laughs> drive replacement. Uh, but the problem with yeah. that is I've got discs <laughs> that I want to yeah. play um it is great though um yeah so i've been playing a lot of that uh mega man x3 was probably the last saturn game i played mm. um and then i dug out the um the super famicom uh just last night just had a run through a bunch of games played mega man x the first one. Oh yeah yeah um for a little bit uh then i actually started playing um arkanoid do it again which is like the second arkanoid game it's actually even though it's a very basic kind of breakout clone um it's mm. really addictive i really enjoyed that i didn't even know there was a super mm. nintendo arkanoid mm. until i sort of saw it in my list of games in my ever drive um, my sd to snes um played a bit of doom um bit of mario all stars um yeah just bounced around on um super super famicom um really mm. so when was the last time you played super nintendo i think i think it's been a quite a long time i think probably in, in reality it, it's latest was on the switch on, yeah. on the online service but yeah. actually getting getting my super well mo- i've got a super nintendo but um it has been sort of modded to to play the japanese games it, ha- it has been a long while but um you know I've, i think i've got to get yeah i've got i've got to set it up again soon yeah yeah and, i mean uh, i've uh i've got i've got a pal super nintendo but um it's not modded so it's 50, horrendous like 50 hertz uh, sort of stuff. So, um, Super Famicoms though, are dirt cheap. Uh, I think the one I use, I got oh, yeah. from Japan, and it mm. cost about sixty quid, including post, um, yeah. in the box. Um, I mean, good I'm, nick. I'm, yeah, Trev, if you, if you ever go to Japan, it is it is ridiculous. The it's got to be one of the most common ones there. Um, I would yeah, say. The, the, yeah, the, there's just you know you go into a shop and and I really wasn't looking searching for them, but there were those piles of Super Nintendos. You know, all wrapped in you know um, a vacuum packed with all, like all the bits kind of like h- and the equivalent off. of like twenty quid or something. Yeah. And and it's like, oh wow, I'll have one of those. And there was like games for like a hundred and forty yen, which is like less than a pound. Yeah, like in, in bins and and some of them like you know, I think in 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 Japan it's it's, it's, it's quite odd. The, they have lots of sort of baseball games and sort of things like that, but it was how do you put it? There was lots of like RPGs, so like the like, and obviously I, I wouldn't buy them. I, I, I don't speak or, or read Japanese, but they have um, 
where we have like all bargain bins full of old FIFAs. They yeah, have bargain yeah. bins full of old Final Fantasy games, and they were literally sort of a pound or two. And selling them to us and mugs like us on eBay for triple the price of uh, yeah, exactly yeah, easily, what you get in easily. those shops. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. I mean, you're going to CEX and to get a, like an unboxed Super Nintendo. They're about mm. 110 quid or something. I'm just like, just go on eBay and get a Super Famicom from Japan for half that. You yeah. know, um, and they tend to look after their stuff better than we do. So you probably oh, be yeah. getting a box and everything, and it won't be yellowed and and everything. Mm. So. Um, definitely, definitely the way I'd recommend it. And if you get yourself a flash cart, you know, um, and actually a lot of random weird power adapters work perfectly with the Super Famicom, like the Mega oh, really? Drive, the Mega Drive 2 power adapter um, works with the, um, the Super Famicom. So you don't necessarily need to get like um, a step down. So you don't converter. need step down converters and all that. And No, no. Um, you just, I think a Mega Drive 2 power supply or a game. Uh, so that or a Game Gear one. There's, there's like one Mega, there's one Sega power supply that works with loads of, Japanese consoles, the UK version of this power supply. So you can look it up. I don't want someone to say, I don't want to say, you know, use this one and they, someone goes and uses it. And yeah, it don't, yeah, up. don't blow up. Yeah. Um, do, do your own research. Look it up. But there we are you not can, financial advisors. Hell no. Hell no. But you might have one knocking around already from mm. your Mega Drive or your Game Gear over that might actually yeah. work. So you can give that a go. But talking of Nintendo, um, we do want to focus on one thing, uh, as we're saying, 26 minutes in. Um, and that's one particular series that is extremely famous. Um, but, you know, we have a unique perspective on it, perhaps, coming from the UK. Um, mm. And that's Mario or Mario. Mm. Uh, I don't you really know what the right pronunciation is. Um, I think I hear both on the interweb. So I'm just going to roll with whatever we want to use personally. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the Super Mario series. Obviously, you know, we know it started officially it appeared in Donkey Kong in 1981. Mm. Then we got to Mario Bros. a couple of years after that, which is, you know, just them in, in that you know, knocking um, turtles off um, the screen and using power-ups and mm. things coming out of pipes. And then we got to Super Mario Bros. on the NES in 1985. So, I mean, what was your first experience with Super Mario games in that series? Well, I, I mean, it was it was Super Mario Brothers um, on, on the NES. And then yeah. I, do, I do remember it before that. But then, to me, it was just like a little character here. I had no... It had no. It was just one a, a character. No what you were controlling, yeah, yeah. But it, it was. It's really sort of yeah. Super Super Mario Brothers. I mean, it was. You know, think thinking back, it was. You know, that game had sort of so much sort of depth and um, you know longevity and all the warp zones and and and, and everything like that. It was. It was. It was really sort of quite an iconic sort of game and. And and everyone knows that, and it's been re-released a million times. But it 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 is still, you know, one of the sort of the best gaming experiences ever. Yeah, it, um, it, it, I would say it defined the platform genre really. Mm. Um, you know that we still you know have that still goes strong to this day. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so that so I mean, was that um um? So you say it was a NES. Obviously, we know the NES wasn't hugely popular in the UK. So, what scenario mm. was that? Was that a friend who happened to have a NES, or was it yeah, your own? No, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, actually, I do, I do know. It was more the um, they used to have it in Dixons, and they had to use the oh, right. the, the eight the the twelve car or eight cartridge thing, and you could play it for you know ninety seconds or however long it was. I remember those units, yeah. And, yeah. You know, so actually, the I was like, oh wow, that 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 looks really good, and it was, but I can never justify it because a NES was you know one hundred and fifty pounds, and and every game was forty pounds or fifty pounds. So would you say and this was around like like nineteen eighty eight, not eighty nine, ninety? Uh, it, exactly, yeah. or yeah. maybe a little bit before that, to be honest. So I went down the route of going, oh, I want to play Mario. Okay, right, everyone had a Game Boy. And yes. then, the, you know, the first game I got was Mario Land. And it was, you know, I, I remember sort of great memories from playing that. And and that that was really sort of my, my, my sort of best experience, you know, with the Mario games was Mario Land on. And that, to, to me, that was just as good, if not better, than, you know, Super Mario Brothers um, on, on the NES. Yeah, and um, that's actually very similar for me as well. Um 
obviously we know that Nintendo's history in the UK is a bit different to the rest of the world. I think mm. we said you know a lot before that the, really the first popular Nintendo system in this country was the Game Boy. Um, mm. Really, so my I think my first um, I remember like as a, as a very as a young kid. Before I even really played the games, I remember the Super Mario Brothers Super Show cartoon used to be mm. on, I think, on Channel 4 um, in the UK. And I remember watching that, and I, I was aware. That was kind of in my very early days of becoming aware of video games being a thing. Mm. So I was probably like six, you know, six, seven years old, maybe slightly mm. young, younger than that. Um, so there was that. I remember that being my first sort of thing that introduced me to the character. Um, and probably in terms of the games, it was really like, I remember playing a Game Boy for the first time and uh, wanting one. Mm. Um, and around the same time, I remember Nintendo released a sticker album um, in the UK. I think Merlin, actually, the guys who do the Premier League stickers, they they got the rights and they released a Nintendo sticker album. This is around 91, 92. Mm. I remember picking up that sticker album. That actually taught me a lot about the sort of the big Nintendo franchises because they all had a little section in the sticker album. Mm. Um, I think all three Mario games are in there because I think they'd all uh, had by that time had all been released. Obviously, we got them a fair bit later than the US and uh, Japan. Mm. I think we got Mario three in like ninety late ninety one. Um, I think you know three or nearly three years after the uh, after Japan, mm. which is kind of crazy to think. Um, and the SNES didn't come out uh, at that point. It was just the Game Boy and the NES. So and then it had a uh, it had a, a um, Super Mario Land. Uh, section in there and loads of other oddball nintendo games that are out in the uk like you know alleyway and solar striker <laughs> and baseball and other and as uh, uh, zelda one and two uh, are in there as well um and then obviously getting the magazines getting into the magazines at that point um this is all before i owned a nintendo system and then um i think playing my mate's game boy he had the game boy um I think we i think it came out in the uk was it around at the end of 90 or was it 91 that we got it in in the uk well, the game boy yeah i think i'm actually oh you know, I'm my, I, I think i think I, I i was i was at prime show my age here. I, I was at primary school so i, yeah, I think it was, it, it was in the 80s it, it, was, it was so it, it came out in japan in 89 and and yeah. uh, america in 89 we got it september 28th 90 oh um so yeah we got it okay. um Less than a year, uh, George, uh, just over a year after America. Mm. Um, so, yeah, um, it would have been around 91, I think, maybe going into 92 that I actually played one. And I think I played Mario Land and I just loved the uh, how, you know, playing a, a platform game. It was just a, a really enjoyable experience. So, yeah, Mario Land. And um, then I got a Game Boy Christmas 92. So a little while. I'd already been out a couple of years by that point um, in, in the UK. Um, I got my own one. Um, I didn't actually get it with Mario Land. That was a little bit further down the line, probably the same year. I got Mario Land for myself, mm. and I bloody love that game. Um, mm. Played the hell out of it. It's quite easy, really, by Mario standards. Um, I think it's only like four stages. Um, and uh, it's very much like the first Mario Brothers, isn't it, on the NES? I mean, the graphics are kind of scaled down to fit the Game mm. Boy screen a bit better. Yeah, um, I actually think it's a better experience than Mario Land 2, to be honest. In some that... ways, yeah, I would agree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. I was, I was going to say when when I, when when I had the show, old play nation games in Croydon. Big shout out to them. Yeah. Um. Um. A boxed uh, Mario Brothers, not Super Mario Mario Brothers, came right. into the store. So I've, I've got a trivia question for you, Trev. What is Mario and his brother Luigi? What is their occupation? Oh, well, plumbers. Oh, that's incorrect. <laughs> this, video game ca ca character. This, oh, this, <laughs> what, what was the thing on QI? We go and then uh, make a loud noise or something. Yeah. Um, actually, according to this Atari game of Mario Brothers on the Atari 2600, they were both carpenters. As in the singers? As in, uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, try, I try to think of Carpenter's song then. Why do birds suddenly appear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, um, yeah. So you're, you're talking about the uh, so the 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 first game, their first ever game with just them. Uh, Mario well, yeah, yeah. Bro Mar Mario, not Super Mario Brothers, which yeah, is yeah. you know the platforming classic, was Mario Brothers. Yes, on, on the twenty six hundred, and and the box version of that has got a, you know a load of um sort of a bit of 
you know, story about the game on the back. And was it's, it the oh, silver Mark, box? Did it come in the silver box? No, I want to say it, like it a, is like a like a maroon colour. Yeah, I think it come. I think it got a couple of re-releases on the twenty six hundred. Yeah, yeah, or it could have been the seventy eight hundred one. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. But I was just looking at this box, and and for some reason, I started reading the back of it, and it was, oh well, it's like they were carpenters. Well. <laughs> well, no, the backstory was a bit vague they're, in those days. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're plumbers, and and it was Atari just... that probably wrote that as well. Yeah, not Nintendo. A, 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 exactly. So they were probably like, oh, oh this is another game of oh, the car. What were they? Carpenter, pl- plumber, but carpenters. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's what they. Yeah, we can't quite translate this from Japanese properly, and um, you know. It's an so, interesting point, you know, that, that second generation of consoles, uh, we have an entire episode dedicated to that, just for anybody mm. who might want to go back. Um, yeah, they, obviously those, sort of, there, were, there were licensed Nintendo games on the 2600 and the Coleco mm. and the Intellivision, you know, Donkey Kong, which is kind of I, famous. I had Donkey Kong bad. on the Spectrum. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. Uh, probably Mario Bros. might have come out on, like, Commodore 64. Or, might have uh, done, Spectrum. yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I mean, they weren't like Nintendo didn't have a, a, a system in in it's certainly not in Europe and, and other states. Maybe the Famicom had come out already by that point in mm. Japan, but um, that was the that was the only sort of experience of those characters we would have had, you know, in the early eighties. Um, but yeah, I mean, going into sort of personal experience, um, there was obviously that first Game Boy game. I do remember playing Super Mario Land two. Uh, which is actually one of my favourite Game Boy games, might even be my favourite. But mm. your point about the graphics, obviously they tried to stylize them more like Super Mario World, really. That's right, yeah. yeah which is yeah. kind of impressive for a Game Boy to be able to pump mm. out something that looks pretty good for a close mm-hmm. to Mario World. Oh, but yeah, it's a good great game. Yeah, a, a really good game. First appearance of Wario as well. Mm. Um, in, in that game is who's, who's the villain. Uh, but yeah, obviously everything is very, all the sprites are quite large. And take up a lot of the screen, so it feels a little bit more claustrophobic. Mm. But it's also yeah. quite easy. There's a really good save function um, in that game, um, and but a really, really fun. If you don't want to, if you want to play a Mario game, you don't want to be hitting your head against the wall with some of the difficulty of the later games. The two Game Boy, you know, well, there's, there's Mario Land Three, isn't there? But it isn't actually Mario that you play as; it's Wario. Um, yeah. But those first two Mario games are great. Just a casual, you know, um, playing. Um, of Mario games. And I remember um, I traded in my Game Boy for a NES a couple oh. of years down the line. So we're looking at very, like, literally the death throes of the NES, like 93, 94 time um, when, I, when I got it. And I remember I got the bundle that came with, uh, brand new it was. Um, I, um, I traded it in, like, a local video game rental shop. Uh, they mm-hmm. would have some brand new sort of consoles they would also sell. And this is when Net, when uh, Nintendo was selling the um, the NES, sort of the, the last bits of stock they had for thirty quid. Oh, I remember, so, I remember that. Yeah, and I thought, got, oh, yeah. oh, 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 and I, and I, well, I wish I had one and just you know kept it in mint condition. But it, yeah, you know, yeah, I, no, I, I don't think they like, marketed it well. I don't, I don't remember really seeing big I, adverts for get a NES no, it's only thirty quid now. Yeah, I, I remember seeing it in um, Boots, Boots, the Chemist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that, that was where, and I thought, oh. I've got the money, and should I buy that? And I and I thought, oh no, I'll. I don't know why I didn't. But <laughs> well, you don't think these are going to be valuable late, late, no, later? No, you, you, it's yeah. always. I mean, was, you know, at, at that time, it was like there was such huge leaps in every generation of, of of video games. It was like, oh, I, you know, you don't want to play that anymore. But um, you would drop the old one like a dirty yeah. rag, really, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. you? In those days, yeah. But I wanted to quickly mention, Trev, was when Super Mario Brothers 3 came out. And I remember at, at, at school, again, potentially I think I was at primary school, and it was such a big deal when this game came out because it, it, it was, I felt like there was loads of advertising, there was, sort of, you, you know, sort of cartoons about it. And, and I remember going into, again, Boots the Chemist, that's where I bought all my... My, my video games from in in, in Dover in, in in Kent yeah and um it, it was such a there was a whole sort of drop of of a whole section with just you know uh, Mario Brothers for it three and it was I think it was something like forty nine ninety nine or fifty nine ninety nine and and I was just like oh wow like that oh, I must be, it's, it's so expensive it must be good and and of course, it, you know, it, it, it was a classic game. But again, 
you know, games on the spectrum cost two ninety nine, and the Amiga, you know, potentially was coming through at that time as well. And um, but oh, I love, love to have that back in the day. I mean, there, there wasn't anything like those games on like Mario three, especially was so polished and so mm. um, incredible. Um, mm. I mean, you had plat, you had awful Euro platform, and well, obviously they weren't awful to us at the time. But like Super Frog and Zool, um, Mario Three just takes a giant dump on them. Oh. Um, it's just that Japanese design that we just didn't really yeah. have on mm. those home on those um, home micros that we were so you know used to. That, 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 that's it, you know. In the UK and Europe, there are so many amazing programmers that made, oh, a, yeah, a, a, yeah, you know, a, a shade, brilliant, man. brilliant games. But what we're talking about here is, is Mario. And the, and the reason a game that started in, you know, 1983, a character is, is still going, you know, 35, 40 years later and, you know, shows no sign of, of, of stopping because it, it's generally a good character it, 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 and, and, the, and the games, are, what, you, what you just said is, is so polished. And the good thing about, um, you know, Mario Brothers, and I remember a few years ago that, oh, you know, someone's found a new glitch on, on you know, the original Super Mario Brothers. So you could do something and, you know, do this. And, you, you know, constantly it's, there was so much, um, sort of depth to them. It wasn't so just, many layers that you just yeah, naturally it, unearth, it, it, isn't there? It, yeah, exactly. It wasn't just run from left to right. It was well, if you stand on this thing and you press down, you go behind the screen and you do this, and um, and then you, you you get that, and then that something goes up the top, and then that takes you to a warp zone, and yeah, you get this yeah. special mushroom. Oh, you can do that and do that. So, in, in essence, if you sort of think about it, all these games had save version save games in them as you know warp zones or effectively you know, yeah yeah because they were to you know to get you to you know because if you if you to play all the way from start to finish through every level it probably take you quite a long time especially mario brothers 3 but the point is you oh you get the oh you can get this feather by doing this and and that gets you to um you know further on in the game and um so there's lots of I just thought that's what I loved about it. There was so much depth um, to it, and it was, you know, great gameplay, and, yeah, it was good. It was an interesting time, actually, around that sort of um, Mm. period because it was probably where there was an explosion of Mario in the UK because, obviously, we just had the Game Boy came out and Mario Land would have been a launch game at the end Mm. of 1990. Uh, I think Mario Bros. 2, I don't think we got that till about 89 um, or Mm. 90. Um, So... um, you know what well, actually want to want to check that out so we had like we we only like a year out from like the previous game um in fact i can tell you it came out um 1989 uh, mm. um, in europe so yeah we had mario bros 2 on the nes 89 mario land in 90 and uh, in 91 we got mario 3 and then 92 mm. um the super nintendo came out with mario world so mm. you know um that was in april 92 so you might not have even have completed mario bros if you got it on launch day and, and we're chipping away at it, unless you sort of absolutely steamrolled roll, roll, roll it, which I certainly wouldn't be able to do when, uh, um, as a kid in those days. Mm. Uh, and as you can't really save without using warp zones, um, you might not have finished it by the time the next huge mainline Mario game came out in the UK. Mm. So from 88 to 92, we got the, at least some of the most incredible, like um, absolute classic Mario games. Um, mm. And yeah, sort of going back to when I actually managed to get a hold of the first Super Mario Brothers, um, I, you know, traded my Game Boy for a NES and it came with um, the original Super Mario Brothers. And that game was just amazing. Um, I absolutely just, you know, lost myself um, in that game. It felt like having having had Mario Land as my first experience, it was like that was blown up onto a big screen uh, with 10 times the amount of levels and depth, even though it's several years older, uh, really sort of three years, four, four, four years um, older. Um, mm. It felt like a big leap from what I was used to on uh, the Game Boy um mm. so that was a great experience playing that first game um i l- love it to this day still um and i think it was um I, d- I don't think i really got to play the others like mario 2 and 3 and world mm. i didn't have a super nintendo back in the day i had a mega drive um so obviously sonic i was all about that um yeah i didn't really get into those until i, I think i re I, I got i traded my nes for a mega drive that's how i got to them the mega drive and I remember I got a NES um, later on, in about 90, 
97, 98, because I just wanted to get one again, and they were dirt cheap, so I grabbed one from a local second-hand shop mm. with a big bundle of car- cartridges, and one of them was Mario 3. Uh, that's oh. when I really got to play Mario 3. I think I might have done it in bits on mates that had Mario All-Stars on the snares. I think I played it in little short little bursts around friends' houses, but that was when I really got to play Mario 3, and I absolutely love that game. And uh, it's still my favourite, probably favourite 2D um, Mario game. I know mm. people tend to just argue over that and Mario World, um, but I, I think three is pro- is is probably my favourite, and that's. An I I, I, I think one and three, uh, mm. you, you know, one is is obviously it's, it's such a huge um, sort of bit of in you know a classic sort of game, and you yeah, know, you yeah, can, you can pick holes in it. Of course, you can now with with, with hindsight, and uh, but I, I I never liked. Um, Super Mario Brothers 2, that always felt, and you know, we knew later on it, it was a, a different game that was sort of reskinned as, as, as a Mario yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that always felt like, oh, you've got to do this and have a mushroom and bury them. And, and it didn't quite feel right to me. And, you know, whether or not I don't know the backstory was it, was it made by Nintendo the same team but just under a different name and then turned into I'm not, not quite sure. Oh, it, then, it was a Do- Doki Doki Panic was what it was originally. Do- yeah, yeah, completely different cat characters. I think it was still made by Shigeru Miyamoto, mm. uh, but yeah, it was a completely di- different game um, originally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so for me, that never felt quite right. But then when Mario Brothers three came out that oh, that sort of almost had the sort of the magic of the original one but one game we're, we're not we haven't talked about from this series and it sort of relates sort of back what we said earlier was you know um the original mario brothers 2 or as we call it mario brothers That's the lost happened. levels yeah yeah um and 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 that was i, I mean it's, it sort of blows my mind that somehow nintendo thought oh well this mario brothers 2 or it's somehow a little bit too difficult, or you know that won't sell in in, in the West. And you know it came out obviously years later, but I, I mean I, I've, I've I played it recently. It's rock hard. It, yeah. it, it really is very cheap as well. Lots of like poison mushrooms and like you mm. know annoying physics effects like wind effects and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's not very enjoyable. If you're an absolute hardcore Mario fan and you like the original Super Mario Brothers, you'll probably mm. find some enjoyment in it. But um, mm. if you don't want to be hitting your head against a brick wall constantly, um, mm. I mean, Mario Brothers 1 isn't particularly easy. There's plenty no. of difficult spots in it. Um, obviously, it's been out for a long time and people can speed run it in 10 minutes or whatever. But mm. um, as a kid, I've you know there was bits of it that I found very difficult. Mario is obviously quite slippery. It's sort of mm. physics and momentum, um, and that can be quite difficult to work with. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, they, they adjusted it in Mario All-Stars, um, where he's more like um, the physics are more like Mario World, which a lot of people are really angry about. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, it was, it's not a very enjoyable game. But it's it's a cool bonus to get in that, mm. in that uh, a, a great com- compilation um, as well, especially for us in the UK where the, the NES wasn't popular. It, it was probably a lot of people in the UK, their first experience of those NES games was probably All-Stars, yeah. Yeah, no, it, ex- exactly. And that's the way a lot of people sort of played it. But talking about the original Mario, there was... Um, I don't know if you know. I always talk about in Carl Jobs on 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 YouTube. He he, he talks. Um, he, he does lots of things about speed running, similar as summoning salt. So it might mean summoning yes, salt yes. with this, or anyway, Carl Jobs. Yep. Um, but he, either way, the point is, um, there was this video that this um, there was some sort of channel in 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 south america where it's like watch mojo or something it's just you know they just they just release 20 videos a day some of them go viral you know whatever and there was this guy on there and he's going oh i'm gonna i'm gonna complete you know I, i'm a speed runner on mario so he sat there and he was you know drinking a, a can of coke as i am now uh, having a slice of pizza and and playing mario or pretending to play it and so he, he he completes it in like nine minutes fifty, what whatever the record is, he's very close to it or whatever. Yeah. And um then the person who actually did this like, you know, called him out and and then he was saying that he got loads of abuse 
from people saying, "Oh, you've copied that that you know that Spanish guy, that you know South American guy, you, you know that's that's his." Oh, right. um, and it, yeah, so it, it's it's an amazing game for doing sort of speed runs in. So it just shows that people are still playing it sort of today, you know, thirty odd years later, and you know, speaks volumes about it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think um, when it came out on um, the Switch as part of the Nintendo Switch Online, I think I did a little run through of it. it took me mm. about 45 minutes, um, I think, uh, not using the warp zones, just going through each level. Oh, wow. And I think I actually I made a point of going through... Um, um, actually, no, I didn't. I actually played it on my... That was on my actual NES. Um, I played mm. through it on my actual NES using an EverDrive. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it took me about three quarters of an hour to go through it from beginning to end. Uh, and I did the same with Mario 2 and, and uh, 3 and went went through the whole series a few years ago. Um, also, the other games, you know, take 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 considerably like longer because they're much bigger. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, that just goes to show how that community has developed. And, I mean, going back to sort of classic Mario games and what it was like when we first experienced them, um, I'd probably say um, the probably the biggest sort of, like, the most incredible experience playing a Mario game, I think, was probably Super Mario 64 for me um yeah i i never i i, I mean what, what we haven't sort of talked about is 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 mario brothers super mario world yes and i, yes. I remember when that came out or i remember seeing it in magazines mean machines are you know and it was like oh super mario brothers 4 it was called originally super mario brothers 4 i yeah, think yeah. in japan it was called it's super mario subtitle, brothers 4 yeah, yeah yeah super mario yeah ex- ex- exactly but it never had that title um in the west but for me it was again i loved the map and i loved oh you went over here and you could save it and you know it's all different ways of finding things you had all those uh, sort of the power pills and stuff ghost and, houses and, from, and like yeah. yeah and 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 the music from there it was always such a sort of great experience and i remember maybe i was a little bit older i always thought super mario 64 was a little bit mm, didn't quite like the controls didn't quite like this didn't quite like that and it it sort of lost lost its charm yeah a bit. yeah and I, I i i didn't like it and you know i'm not taking anything away from it that's just my opinion and you know i appreciate it. it's a good game and it's very innovative but didn't quite enjoy it well you know you're basically wrong uh, <laughs> i'll tell you why a bit later but what am i wrong was... trev why why oh. Oh well, yeah. yeah, we'll go there. We'll go there. But yeah. um, with, with regard to Mario World, um, yeah, I never because I never had a Super Nintendo. Um, I had mm. a, a, a sixty-bit console. I was the Mega Drive, and then I basically it was like Amiga alongside that. Um, mm. I, I, I remember playing it a few times around a mate's house. It didn't massively bowl me over, um, mm. probably because I thought it was quite similar to the other games. I don't know what what we really would have bowled me over. And it's mm. only um, really in recent years I think I played it. Um, I think I went through it on uh, again on Switch Online for the first time. I think for, for over like the decades, I think I've dipped in and out of it and got X amount of, of levels in without really like and then abandoning it and then coming back. I actually sat down as part of that little spree I went through of going through all the ga- all the classic platformers. Mm. Um, I went through it and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I, um, I kind of, I think some of the, some of the mechanics of Yoshi and like the, the Cape feather, I didn't really get when I played it in little short bursts and mm. they kind of clicked that, that time that I played it on a uh, switch online I, and I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, so now I have an appreciation for, for, for Mario world. I mean, it's not the best looking super Nintendo game. It probably was for a few months mm. when it came out and then, you know, other games kind of superseded it probably quite quickly. Um, I mean, Super Mario Bros. 3 doesn't look that much worse than it, really. Um, I, I think with Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario World, it had, I, I you know, I, you know, I think you can look at it and it's got a real, I don't know, real charm to it and, you know, real sort of fluidity. But then yeah. you look at other games, um, I don't know, sort of the Castlevanias and, um, Contra like, and Contra, like, uh, yeah. oh, it's got much better effects. It's got much better this. It's got big much screen better that. filling, like bad guys and like yeah, a, a, exactly. But then I, I, I loved, I loved the way that Super Mario World looked. Yeah, yeah, and I, so I, I appreciate it now. And even the little animations of Mario's hat, sort of flipping up a tiny bit when he's coming down from a mm. jump, 
all of that kind of cool stuff. Um, and obviously the map, like you say, the different paths you can take, you can cut out, you know, dozens of levels in theory mm. to get to mm. the end. Um, and actually, but I really, I actually prefer um, Yoshi's Island. Um, I really like um, Yoshi's mm. Island. Um, in a weird way, it's a lot more basic. It's quite straightforward. You're just li- linearly going through each kind of sub level course. Mm. And then to get to the castle um, at the end, or there's a sub castle, and then another few, and then a castle. It's quite straightforward and, 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 and linear. I kind of like that. As I'm getting older, I'm finding a bit more. My brain is just getting crapper and crapper at being good at like tolerating games where I'm being asked to go here, there, and everywhere. So, um, and obviously graphically, it looks incredible. And um, the Super FX chip does a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, it's just a really cool platform game. Like um, you know, the mechanics are really like unique. Um, mm. Obviously, they've been done to death in subsequent Yo- Yoshi games, but at the time that was unique. Of you know, you don't really die unless you fall down a hole or if you lose ba- Baby Ma- Mario. Mm. Um, you can kind of take hits from bad guys ad infinitum as long as you can get Mario back at the end of it. But that doesn't make it easy. I I, I always difficult. felt that. I mean, I I like the way it looked, but then I was like, Super Mario World was so good. I wanted more of that. And yeah. I felt, and I felt I was given something else. Yes, and, and we didn't really get a sequel to that until probably like New Super Mario Bros. Really, yeah, I, 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 th- I, th- I think you're at, you're absolutely right there, and and that had its own sort of certain bit of charm. But Trevor, the listeners want to know. I, I I've put my, I was gonna say cock off the block then, but um, <laughs> I, I, I've said I don't like Mario sixty four, not 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 a fan of it, but I do appreciate. You know, it's a very innovative game, but don't, you don't don't pat, patronize me. You don't think it's innovative. You, know, you hate it. You, you hate you it. You don't. You don't know much about computer games, but you seem to like it. <laughs> I don't know anything about about um, about electronic you know. electronic game, um, but yeah, um, I got the N sixty four Christmas ninety seven. I actually got it with ISS sixty four. Um, yeah. But I knew obviously Mario, how incredible everyone was saying it was, and seeing it online, you know, Games Master mm. and influence and reading about it in magazines i really really wanted to play it and also i mean i've always been a fan of like mario ever since i had the game boy so it was always going to be a game i was going to get um and yeah i think i think i eventually i think i borrowed it off someone i think someone wanted to play iss 64 and they had mm. mario so it's like okay i'll do you a little we'll do a little i think we'll do a little um swap swapsy for a while um mm. and god yeah it, it kind of it just blew me away um just that first bit when um, there was nothing like it at the time, um, just that first bit outside the castle, you could just mess around like climbing trees mm. and and doing all the different jumps and like go swimming and that amount of freedom, yeah. which is kind of mind blowing um, and kind of overwhelming. Mm. And Mario can obviously, you know, it's compared to today, like, it's, it's clunky, but to be able to control him and go and go in any direction. And it felt fairly fluid. Like, it took some getting used to. Um, mm. with, with the analog stick um eventually you get used to it um and i just went down i, I mean I, I i i ended up completing it um nearly got i don't think i got all 120 stars i think i ended up literally on about 119 on that original oh, wow. playthrough so I nearly had all of them but um just 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 the the way you progress through the castle you opened up newer bits which is really addicting the actual courses were were amazing as well they were so different from each other there was ones that are under the sea some that were like took place inside a clock, others that took place in a desert, one that took place just in a hilly sort of, um, you know, first level of any Mario game type setup. Mm. Um, the, the, it wasn't just a straight up get to the end. There was loads of little mini like missions in each. Um, it wasn't just run to the end. It was like, you know, rescue the baby penguin and take it back to the mother. You know, all these quirky little um, things. Um, so it was just a, a completely new way of playing a, a Mario game that was so immersive. And yeah, it was just um, the controls, the the freedom, being able to go anywhere. Um, I mean, I just used to enjoy like that first stage where you'd get, end up on a, on like the hilltop, but just looking down and just seeing how how big the level was and how I could run off into that hill off off, off in the far distance. Mm. Obviously now it looks it looks like you know it's, it's minuscule compared to Skyrim, you know. Or oh like, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. Anything, but but that but that was just incredible at the time. So um, yeah, probably my um, yeah, I probably would say it's my favorite Mario game. I mean, I, I think I like Super Mario Odyssey so much because it reminded me a lot of Mario sixty four yeah. doing the I I, 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 I think that. Mario Odyssey smashing game absolutely brilliant and it was just so fun and um, 
well, talking about Mario Lassu, we sort of jump forward a huge amount, but I, I, I think we're both on the same um, sort of page when we say it was just good fun actually going around and, and looking for the stars and all the coins or, yeah, or moons, moons, use, yeah. moons, moons. Yeah. And, um, but they were easy to find. Yeah, they were, yeah. and They, they, um, they, they were, but there was lots of them and they were easy to find. You had to do, do little fun things and, um, and, and, and that was, you know, what I liked about it. And, you know, and, uh, but actually hearing you sort of describe it as, you know, you're going to, and, and I, I can appreciate how such a game changer it was to, to be able to have a whole map to yourself. And yeah. In reality, you know, it's, it's not Grand Theft Auto 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2 size of map. But, you know, before that, you didn't have games where you had a whole map that you could, you know, run around and, you, you know, you didn't have to follow the, the story or, you know, it no. wasn't, you know, just moving forward and the screen pushed behind you. It, it, you know, it wasn't that. It was, oh, actually, I want to, you know, practice doing this. I want to see if there's any secrets over here and... You know that's that's really where the sort of the, the magic from, I, I guess the sort of the Mario games comes from, really. Yeah, I mean, I would say um, the closest thing you had on the PlayStation. I mean, there wasn't really like 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 anything on the PlayStation. I mean, we got Croc, but that was after Mario sixty four had been announced and released mm. in, in other territories. Um, obviously, Tomb Raider, but it's still kind of you're inside tombs, <laughs> so you're not running yeah. around a big, huge open meadow, you know, to get to something off in a cliff, you know, a mountain off in the distance. Um, so it's not quite the same. Obviously, those games did sort of come out for the PlayStation afterwards, like Spyro and uh, things like that. Spyro, there's argument, yeah. yeah, there's an argument that Banjo Kazooie is actually better than Mario 64. I mean, I really enjoyed that when I first played it, but I think the progression's not as good. You do mm. find yourself wandering around a bit aimlessly, not knowing where to go next. Some people like like that. I get find that frustrating. Um, so that hasn't aged quite as well as Mario 64, but I guess also, you know, we're going past an hour, so we probably want to look to, to wrap up. But I guess we'll jump to kind of the more modern games. Mm. Um, I was never a fan of Super Mario Su- Sunshine. Um, no, no. I had it like um, I picked it up around 2003, 2004. Mm. So it was fairly new. Um, and I was really disappointed. I was like, I wanted, an, like you said about Mario y- Yoshi's Island, I mm. wanted another Mario world. I wanted another Mario 64. Mm. I wanted another Mario, I wanted Mario 64 too. Not like, I'm not, I just found it utterly un, in, uncompelling going around mm. like, like um, firing water at paint. Um, and well, and I, the controls I, were horrific as well oh, to be able to do, do, do it, that. So yeah. It was sometimes. Do you know what I mean? You want one button for action, one button for jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where's it fun going, oh, you're constantly thinking, oh, I've got to try and get load up more water or oh, load up more water and, you know, shoot stuff. And I mean, if know. it had auto aim on the water, mm. um, that it would be completely transform the game. Mm. Um, but no, you've got a light. And also, you, know, you can have an auto aim by default, but then maybe if you want to be precise, you can zoom in with a button press. But yeah, it was just so difficult to control, and like some that made some of the boss battles incredibly like tedious and like frustrating. And um, mm. I got it on the 3D All Stars. Um, yeah, pack. I got yeah, yeah. I've and I tried that. playing it. I got I think I got further into it than I ever did like back in the day on the GameCube. I mean, it mm. always it looked incredible, like mm. um, like the Mario, like the, the the what looked incredible about it was it looked like the actual pre rendered artwork that was on the boxes mm. and the and like the marketing of Mario. And to see that in the game looked looked incredible, but very frustrating. And it was still frust. They've tweaked it and made it a little bit better with the Switch with the controls, and it's obviously widescreen and 1080p, but mm. it's still very frustrating to play um, because of that whole p- getting rid of paint mechanic. You know, um, yeah. yeah. It, I mean that that was. I mean, good to think about other other things, but yeah, yeah, I charming don't story it, and everything, and yeah, it's unique. It's, but yeah, it's not ever going to go down as as a classic, and and I think. Um, you know they got they got back on their feet with um obviously it was 3D Mario it seems to be two trends is the 2D Mario's and the, and the, and, the, and the 3D Mario's yeah so in the 3D one you, you had the Mario um uh oh what was it called Mario Galaxy Super Mario Galaxy yes, and yes. that those two games um on on the um the Wii I've never a huge fan of the Wii we talked about that before so yeah I can't say I played a huge amount of it but that seemed to have actually a bit of that charm. You know, you're going on to different planets, you're doing this, and and then 
Mario Odyssey was an absolute 10 out of 10 game and I'd you know I recommend that to to anyone really oh yeah I agree it's mm. probably the best of, of the recent Marios I never got a chance to play Galaxy because I was never into the Wii I might try it now it's in that 3D All-Stars pack yeah um, again I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it but it, it is because it's, it's, it's a Wii game it, it's still got awful controls yeah yeah and yeah. You, you know you're you're, you're, you're sort of do I, I I don't know. It's it's sometimes you don't want to be waggling your arm around when you just when you sat down on your sofa to play a Mario game necessarily. No, do you? I, yeah. I, I I you know I I just want another Mario Odyssey. That that that's what I want. Which is probably um, what we'll, what we'll get next. Yeah, I, I, hopefully, and you know I'll, I'll be you know first in line for that. But uh, as I sort of mentioned, there's you know the two lines of Mario games. So then they started doing the the um new super mario brothers games yeah it's kind of a final sort of point i think yeah i would like mm. to just sort of talk about those i mean um new super mario bros on on the ds is excellent uh it's a yeah. really brilliant game um if you're looking to, to just try like a, a fairly like classic style i wouldn't say it's quite as have, have as much depth as mario world no. uh but if you want like um a, a halfway between a modern mario game and like the classic style mario new super mario bros the first one mm. on the ds is is a really really great game um yeah yeah it looks really great um the mechanics there's some additional mechanics that have kind of been borrowed from the 3d mario games like you know um leaping off walls and like different kinds of jumps and all that sort of stuff um um and you can also collect you know there's there's hidden things to collect in each stage but it controls really great mm. um also you can play it on a 3ds if that's what you've got with the backwards compatibility um, you could even go to get it on the virtual console on the Wii U. Um, so mm. yeah, um, was that? Did, did you get around to play those at all? Yeah, no, I, I played that, and and obviously they continued that series with the with the, with the Wii version. Or, yes, you know, not the the you know new Super Mario for the Wii it was a completely different game. And then there was the um, the second one as well for the 3DS, and then yeah, the, yeah. Um, on on the, the on the uh, Wii U had a version which then got re- released on the Switch. Yeah, and I yeah. and I remember thinking, oh, Nintendo hit the jackpot. You know, that's what people wanted. It was is it was a two D game, and you know, it, I, I I thought I thought it was brilliant. You know, going back to form and, but you're right. What it's saying, it it, it lost. You know, I always like the map side of things. Yeah, this had to, yeah. You know, it was just like oh, level, 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 level. Right, you're on to next lots. Level, 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 level. But actually. That's kind of, I think, what people want now more with the games is 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 to sort of almost follow along and have lots of different challenges. And they haven't got the, I think, the reason for the world was was because you couldn't really save them, as 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 obviously you can now with the games. Basically, yeah, and I think as a handheld game, I think you probably want something a bit more linear and straightforward. You haven't got to think too much about on the train when you're doing, you know, quick yeah. twenty minute bursts. Um, of it but um yeah they had the there was the handheld games and obviously the console versions as well not mm. a big fan of the first wii games it does have a lot of wii extra tacked on motion crap which gets mm. a bit tedious but the wii u one is great a very quite quite difficult quite a difficult yeah. game um mm. it's got a lot of that old school mario difficulty that the handheld ones didn't like mario new use of mario bros 2 um is very easy on the 3ds because you have Basically, the gimmick is to collect loads of coins. So mm. you just build up so many lives, it's never really an issue. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Wii U version is really great. Obviously, it come out on the um, the Switch as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, any final thoughts on, on Mario before we jump on? No, no. Um, I think we could do another whole episode on all of the spin-offs. You could really, yeah. Quite yeah, I, 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 I think so. Look out for that one. Mario um, Kart, sports Mario games. Mario Kart, and football, like, yeah. baseball, tennis. Yeah. Um, golf. A lot of them have had their own line of games, mm. you know, mm. in and of themselves um, as a, well. A, a, exactly. Super Paper Mario, yeah. the RPG series. Yoshi games, uh, more Yoshi yeah. games and all of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, Stu, where can you find us on the interwebs? Well, basically, search Console Shock anywhere. So we're on Twitter, um, we're on uh, YouTube, Facebook, um, just, and then we've got our website, consoleshock.net. So 
wherever you, you search console shock and then you can also download the podcast or any sort of podcast client so we're on stitcher we're on spotify we're on um, itunes or apple podcasts not sure what it's called now and then and i think our feed has been picked up by sort of quite a few other sort of podcast clients as well the podcast catchers catchers yes. pod catchers <laughs> <laughs> well you can catch us somewhere then for all those various podcast catches um, and thank you everybody for listening as always we hope you enjoyed the show and we will catch you in the next one take care take it easy guys bye bye